What's up guys, Day Zero Gaming here today and I'm going to be sharing with you guys my project Fallout New Colorado. So this is just going to be a short portion of it. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes today, but you'll kind of get the theme of it. So right now you'll in the background to see Fallout 76 gameplay, although the actual commentary will be of my planned project. So there you go. And... If you have any ideas to contribute to my plan itself, you can go ahead and share those in the comment section. Or if you'd like to contribute in a different way, either monetarily, if you actually want to see the project become a thing, or with your ideas, hours, script writing, voicing, anything like that, you can go ahead and leave it in the comment section. If there's enough support of this, I'm willing to make it into a thing you know, as a mod, or if Bethesda actually will take us on, you never know. So as you can see, there's like this little camp theme going here. Fallout New Colorado obviously would have a lot of state parks, so that's kind of the theme here, it's just a little trading depot and and something along the lines of that. Um, just to show you kind of what the state parks would be like, it would the state park towers or whatever would be all over the place the, and then the radiated bald eagle stuff like that that would be just awesome so before I share with you what I'm going to share today just as this is the first video in the entry I'll share with you a brief little thing I'd like to add um, that's not in the notes for today so obviously it would be Colorado, but like I'd like to have like a working so it so most of the things in this world will either be partially functional, like barely clean, or will be not functional that you can get running. So that's the thing I've always seen in these types of Fallout games. Nothing works. <laughs> you can build these robots yourself and stuff like that, and it's kind of like oh, you made that out of steel. Um, there's a lot more things to build that than steel. I mean, even by destroying turrets in the world, you get... See, just to repair its oil and all this stuff, but when you build it, it doesn't require targeting. It doesn't require any of that stuff. So you'd have to go scavenge for some parts, but you could actually um, find, like, broken down turrets, and you can actually scrap them and return them to your base and build that turret that way. So any... Basically anything you find in the world can be brought to one of your settlements and almost anything in the world can be turned into a settlement. Um, a big thing in Fallout 4 also was the Sim Settlements mods. I'd like to see that but without having to be a mod, just as the world space you can send settlers from another one of your settlements over to um, that. So just a spoiler real quick for this type of thing. So. The Enclave would be present, and with the Enclave you can actually like raid vaults and send everyone from the vault um, to like a type of concentration camp thing, and then from that concentration camp thing you can shape them into workers and then build an armed sim settlement, and productivity is increased. And your defense is the armed guards, so you wouldn't have to have turrets. You'd have enclave guys with power armor sitting there making sure the guys work. And they'd have different audio than, than if they were free instead of slaves. And then through the raider option, you could obviously have the explosive collars on them. And then maybe some raider guys with spike guns or something, I don't know. That's just uh, that's just um, just a little thing there, and then also something else I would like to do is get a lot more animals into the game, like bald eagles and stuff like that. Since it's a park, I don't know this guy. Um, since it's a park and everything like that, get as much different buildable things as possible, and then also get as much. Um, animals as possible that would be in a park like a bear well I guess like a Yaguai but here's the thing is there's gonna be a project purity type thing 
and the reason I want so many animals in these in these parks is because you're gonna basically do project purity with the enclave and you can actually like become part of the enclave in this one because you're because of the way the story is you can actually influence them um, to either develop the FEV killer that basically does what Project Purity had planned to do in the original Fallout 3 or you can get the Enclave to just provide pure water to the Commonwealth and through a whole bunch of scientists um, including some synth runaways from the Institute as well I, I don't know when the timelines can be for this game I haven't decided that yet but some synth and maybe a real person or two from the institute that have that are on a basically just um, trip trip to the uh, Colorado area to gain scientific material and they have a lot of technology with them so in between that and a whole bunch of different factions in the game and unique characters you can get enough scientific intellect to be able to create an FEV virus that doesn't kill the FEV victim it actually starts to de-evolutionize them um, back towards what they normally were so for super mutants you'd, over time in game you'd see um, in the areas super mutants start rehumanizing so you'd see like these green super mutants all of a sudden their arms would be smaller and then their legs would be smaller, their heads would be smaller, they'd start turning more palish color. Um, and the enemy, instead of being called super mutant, it would be called mutant or sub mutant, subhuman, and then eventually they'll be human. <laughs> and then, I mean, I don't know how all that would work scientifically. I mean, I'd need to get some information on that. And then the Yao Guai would be um, called um, basically sub sub yagwai sub bear and then and then bear you know and then the sting wings would turn into mosquitoes and then the death claws would would turn into like not dogs but like just like a less scary thing basically just takes all the mutations out of it and you know starts to de-evolutionize even if it's over like the course of 30 years in game or 40 years in game as time progresses you'll actually see that happening maybe not quickly but you'll actually see it happening which is my goal if the bald eagles would actually turn into real bald eagles all the plant life would start turning back to what it would be the grass would start getting greener and the water would start you know it'd be pure it would be a pure water source so all the sub water sources downstream would be pure and then like basically not the entire place because you know there's there's some places that'll still be cut off from this pure water but it'll start like getting these huge areas of the map just changing and like the people around it, the settlements around it will change with them. All of a sudden, like these raider groups will have access to pure water. They might, you know, try to try to take over the water source, you know, raiders. Or they might, you know, you might talk to them and be like, hey, I've got pure water for you to trade if you don't attack my settlements. We've got, you know, and then like the crimson caravan or something like that could be tied into it and then you could trade this water to the caravans and actually export it export your water source for caps or create your own currency if you get an NCR ending and all the factions in game almost all of them can actually be friendly with each other through very high charisma or very high you know just will I mean you got goodwill I mean you've got a whole bunch of things going on in the game 
you can actually get them all to like even the vaults the enclave doesn't have to read the vaults you can actually set up the enclave to where you convince them that hey these are pure blood humans that are friendly why would we raid them when we can just like without having to concentrate them and have them hate us why don't they turn them why don't we turn them into loyal US citizens you know that type of thing and then project purity instead of killing everything be like listen we could bring all the animals back we could create a superpower of the enclave we can get the brotherhood to side with the enclave be like basically with high charisma be like you will be the guns and we will be your government which is the actual reason the brotherhood split up but if you make um, the enclave vote in a president and get the NCR you can get the NCR and mix in with the brotherhood too because you can get it to where hey the NCR will be like this part of this and then the brotherhood will be this part of this and it just ends up being an awesome awesome game or you can have them all worrying with each other and doing all these dirty things behind each other's backs um, and obviously not everything should be, everyone's gonna be cool with you siding with all the factions like some of the factions will be like you fucking bastard and it starts trying to slit your throat and send guns after you and set up spies within your network I mean and then they'll also try to overthrow you and then some people will be like within the enclave will be like you can't side with those muty bastards and then they'll try to like assassinate you as well they'll try to create a new enclave in a section of the map and you'll have to e exterminate them all or if you have really really high charisma you can walk in there without a weapon and talk them down <laughs> if you have a weapon they're just gonna try to shoot you but make an easter egg or something if you walk in there with a, without a weapon in some parts of it you can have different options I mean you just holster your weapon with high charisma or a high idiot level so say you don't have intelligence <laughs> they'll feel bad for you <laughs> not that part though not that enclave part but just like certain parts of the game rock, walk into the raider settlement they're like hand us your caps you're like uh what are caps they'll be like you can be one of us we'll take you in <laughs> or if you say that to the enclave they'll put a minigun to your head and be like you're a, you're a bastard or something like that and just insta end your game just like dead Red Dead Redemption 2 style <laughs> or Red Dead Redemption 1 style dead <laughs> okay so that's that's kind of the process behind this and I'm gonna read to you something from my notebook here so this is gonna be one of the vaults and this is specifically gonna be the good enclave options so this isn't gonna be like just a t this is just a very tiny speck of one tiny speck of one um, faction that you're encountering another faction with. So if you wanted to, you could set up, you could meet this vault and then be like, okay, this is the only faction I'm gonna be with in this game. I'm gonna get this vault to where it's the only faction in the Commonwealth that has running water, good food. I'm gonna I'm gonna raid all the other vaults, enslave them, bring them over to this vault. I'm going to enslave the enclave leaders, bring them to this vault, and hold them hostage. Brotherhood leaders, hold them hostage, bring them here. Murder everybody else, just free for all. And then have all these people, like, making camps and building together, and under one common goal of overthrowing you and killing you. And eventually you get some really hard enemies, because you have, like, the leaders of factions in your vault or something like that. But... That's, that's my plans for this type of thing, so here we go. So this is a vault. Um, I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, before I read that, I have another part. It's on this page too. So there's going to be the Colorado Money Press. I'm pretty sure the real name of it in real life is the U.S. Mint. It stores silver bars and mint coins in real life. So the Colorado Money Press. Huge underground vault with pre-war money underneath. has, um, And then up in the actual part, it has... Um, you so they were broken, but you have to fix them. Reinstalled money presses that turn pre-pressed coins into U.S. pre-war coins that can be used at certain pre-war robot vendors as raw material for crafting and for coin slots for random machines and junk givers. 
or you can create currency like NCR currency with it if you start with the NCR or with the Enclave or Brotherhood if you make if you make a money system in the game with a certain faction or with all the factions you can actually print money for them example for penny so the things you can use the coins on other than post-war stuff so this is pre-war stuff penny shaper at the zoo or 50 cent vending machine the library dispensers for books candy claw like at an arcade uh, the binoculars at the state park uh, washer or dryer to wash your clothes dry your clothes and you can task settlers to build a sim settlement at this money press that way or or you can build at it yourself and send certain settlers here to increase productivity without having to have it generalized so what that would do is it would so if you have the sim settlement it'll just pick from um, so you pick the faction or multiple factions and then send settlers here that would have certain that have the best skill set set for the money press that would get keep the machines working and print the most coins in a span amount of time and supervisors that would supervise them pretty well if it's the enclave or raiders I mean if you have it set up a certain way it would be the defense guys with big guns if it was like the scientists they'd be looking for new mods to put onto the things to get them printing different stuff new currency types higher currency types lower currency types etc gets a good system so here's this portion okay it's not related to the money press this is separate so a mountain nuke so there's a mountain at one of the state parks and it's been nuked by the communist chinese and the base inside is enterable but it's heavily radiated so you have to enter the mountain so it was like a hollow hollowish mountain because they've like burrowed into it and they've made this huge base so, so it's enterable you enter and it's a whole bunch of floors and some of it's been nuked out some of it's not and it's just damaged heavily and you end up finding why it was nuked eventually so there's pre-war documents inside not inside that part but you'll end up seeing what part so that the base was a storage base of power armor secrets and at the bottom of the base is still fully intact because it's a vault you find vault and then it's a placeholder but I'm just saying 109 it's probably already a vault it's just a placeholder if you have a pit boy you can open the vault ooh that's a big spoiler you don't start with a pit boy you don't um, You'll f that'll be in a future video I need to create some lore around that you were a vault dweller but you lose your pit boy so you, so you end up having to do this quest to find your pit boy and you learn of other vaults and you can actually go get a pit boy from one of these vaults if they let you in there's a trading vault and then there's another vault that's open with you learn that that's where you meet the enclave or one of the meeting locations is you find an enclave officer that has just slaughtered an entire vault um, or is in the process of it depending or hasn't done it yet uh, depending on your point in the game and this has many outcomes if you, if you sided with the enclave which is what I'm showing you guys today you can alert them to the existence of the vault the enclave will either execute imprison or welcome the vault dwellers to their base or create a happy relationship with them with you as their mediator the vault has a pure water source and food processor many problems though the airlock inside the vault is collapsing and end game if you visit the vault everyone has already turned to ghouls slash feral ghouls the enclave have them killed or spared with more and there's more dialogue options the vault's water supply is getting irradiated and if this isn't fixed by end game some ghouling happens except ferals are killed enclave confronts you if you had met an allied with their vault with the enclave option and are angered that you let these pure people turn to ghouls infighting occurs in enclave against you i haven't written that out yet the food processor only gives them bland meals and you can trade them food for vault 109 food 
about 109 water or for free to improve relations. When sided with Enclave, this can permanently be solved with Enclave food rations in exchange for their food processor. So it can be examined and reproduced to Enclave settlements and post-war um, for post-war reasons. And if they're allied with the Brotherhood, they, you can actually get the Brotherhood to use these processors and Brotherhood scientists to help them create better processors using this pre-war technology, which is awesome. The lighting in the vault is very dim and you can fix their lights as well. The Enclave can provide Enclave lights to the vault in exchange for the old ones to scrap and to use in schematics. The overseer of the vault is descended from an army general and has war secrets on hand. The purpose of the vault lays with him and very few others. The vault overall can provide skilled tactics officers to the Enclave, a renewable food source, a water source, a command post, a settlement, a pure DNA supply, a cache of advanced 50 cal bullets, and weapon research for a 50 cal machine dual gun equipped on T-51 power armor, winterized with a built-on jetpack and rucksack, already built. <laughs> and obviously you can have Enclave, I mean, Enclave researchers and other researchers re get better mods for this, and that'll be coming up. A 50,000, uh, no, not 50,000, a 5,000 bullet capacity drum mag per gun, and with Blueprint, you can get a 20k drum mag shared capacity pack or laser pack, um, depending on the scientists you do it with, with unlimited fusion capability. Project Purity 2.0 can be helped by recruiting named scientists from this vault as they have knowledge as of the vault systems from the purified water. The vault can also be expanded if you clear the nuclear waste and use air dome slash purifiers from the institute and can and then the nuclear waste can be dumped in the sea via trash vertebrates or used as nuclear waste junk source and extracted for nuclear waste. Lots of details to come. So the way the dual miniguns work so their dual pair miniguns are powered through armor fusion process and bullets are loaded from drum magazine into belt and me mechanically and each belt is loaded into a roll. Each roll is connected to loaded roll as it reaches 75% capacity. So 175% of rolls capacity is fed at all times of burst fire and 125% were higher at automatic firing speed so that the weapon is always able to fire as long as it doesn't overcome the um, as long as it doesn't overheat until you create cooling systems for it and until you can I mean and it runs out after you know the 20,000 capacity it is out of ammo so burnt rolls are fed into a roll storage compartment to be refilled or discarded Rolls can be deposited into system through manually hand-feeding backloaded system after lifting safety armor plating away. Must be done whilst outside of power armor. And obviously you can get people to do this for you. Um, you can just park your power armor uh, at a station and a repair tech can repair your armor, load it up, get it going for you. So you'd have to have the specific person that knows how. Um, if you find a training manual, you can actually use this to teach people, but it takes them 10 weeks to learn a skill in game. Okay, so that's what I have written down for that part, and there's more to come. As I said, I'd like to hear your feedback and your um, knowledge on anything I said. If it doesn't make sense, let me know. If you'd like anything added, let me know. If you'd like to contribute, let me know. I'd like to get this going. So thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.